I need the Better City Deal campaign. Uh, there's a huge number of things I could talk about today. So we picked uh, what we regard as our number one priority, the thing that we think that the City Deal should invest in first in order to open up uh, many, many other opportunities. Basically, we're just saying upgrade and integrate this, the, traffic's, uh, the, the city's traffic signals and the traffic management system. It's deliverable within three years. It doesn't require any compulsory purchase orders or any um, uh, long-term, long uh, consultation processes. The cost is unlikely to exceed 10 million pounds. That's based on about 100,000 pounds per um, set of traffic lights and installing um, detectors in the roads. It provides an opportunity to install traffic uh, journey monitoring equipment. We don't actually have very good, quality, very good quality data on journeys. We have quite a lot of traffic data. We don't really know where people are traveling from and to. And this, is, and this, and this upgrading all signals would allow us to install equipment to do that. And really, really importantly, it enables us to, to, to trial smart traffic management. Um, and we're, we're proposing three locations where this could be trialed. And the benefits would be, would be, would be um, perceived immediately. It would reduce congestion markedly, just improving the flow of traffic through the city without building any other infrastructure would improve this. There are lots of junctions where the traffic lights are not integrated into the traffic management system, largely because they are attached to new developments. Um, even Great Knighton uh, traffic lights, those are not integrated. The Waitrose lights, you will all experience that you're sitting in the traffic lights waiting for no traffic to turn. It will reduce pollution, pollution through the city. Um, again, that's because traffic, as traffic flows, it's the stop start that generates disproportionately large amounts of pollution. Um, it, it will allow traffic, uh, it will, sorry, allow the buses priority signals. It, it, some of the infrastructure is already installed to allow this, but it's not being used. And it just means that when a bus is approaching lights, the light phasing can be adjusted to get the buses through and at the, you know, at the disadvantage of traffic approaching from other directions. And really, really importantly, and this the, the huge business, the huge cost savings for businesses here, it allows us to, re, to respond much, much more effectively to incidents on the motorway and on the A14. At the moment, the city becomes overwhelmed with traffic every time this happens, and it's happening pretty much every week on average. If we have a traffic management system that allowed us immediately to start routing traffic um, in, a, in an efficient way, this would make, would, 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 um, Mean that people weren't so late for work, weren't missing, weren't missing meetings. Um, and having comprehensive journey, traffic journey monitoring, um, just uh, equipment means that we'll have better quality data for implementing future schemes. So I've mentioned smart traffic management. This is a system where you relocate the queues within the city to the outskirts of the city, where you can build some additional road capacity, typically about two lanes and 500 meters to hold traffic and, get, and provide a bypass lane to get, uh, get buses past that queue into the, into the main uh, stream of traffic. Beyond those control points, traffic moves freely. Um, so the buses and the cars and the taxis all move together on existing road structure. We don't have to build a, a, a bus lane all the way from Manly Marsh Roundabout all the way to the city centre of the city. We just build a 500 metre lane bypass to get past the queue because that's where the queue is. Beyond that, there's no, there's no, there's no further queues. And it should be said that this is the point that Jim Chisholm keeps making is that actually the reduction in traffic is only in the order of 10% in order to GP just the city. It's not that we have to radically, you know, we don't have to relocate half the traffic in the city out. It's just around 10%, which is why you only need about 500 metres of additional queuing space outside the city. Um, that bypass lane, as I said, enables the buses to jump past the queue. And the work involved in building that little bypass lane, additional storage lane, is much less disruptive than building a bus lane all the way into the city centre. From Manning Mosh to, 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 to um, Grange Road or to, to Northampton Street, that's a massive undertaking involving purchase, compulsory purchase orders, um, lots of consultation, relocating services under the roads, under the verges. Uh, in you know, Milton Road, we're talking about chopping out all the trees. Uh, it's, you know, it's just the things we shouldn't be contemplating unless we absolutely have to. And smart traffic management is responsive to demand. It means that as the traffic flows change through the day, through the period, through the week, uh, the, the, it can react. The congestion charge is pretty crude by comparison. You have to set the charge and it just applies between certain hours, irrespective of what's happening on the streets. 
And it should be pointed out that smart traffic management does not create queues, it just relocates queues. So if there is no queuing now, as there isn't at off-peak times, there would be no queuing um, because of smart traffic management. And finally, there is an opportunity here to raise money. And I'll go into that into a, a little bit more detail. But before that, here's just an illustration of how smart traffic management work. Here we've got Junction 11 on the M11, and we've got um, a section of roads up to Avonbrook's Road, um, I don't know why it's called Avonbrook's Cycleway, but it's not just a cycleway, but um, that section of road is already pretty wide and actually we probably need to add a, one additional lane. And it just allows you to queue some, to hold some traffic there before it goes in. And we also have to, to put some queuing on Shelford Road. Um, there's already a bus lane along that section, so we've already got the bypass lane in effect. And from that point on, along Hawkston Road, Trumpeton Road, the road, the traffic would be, smoke, would be flowing smoothly. And ideally, we link these in with park and ride sites. There's a talk about having a Hawkston park and ride site on the other side of the M11, the, A the A10. So that means the traffic can go into there, or it, you know, there'll be signage saying, you know, it will be 20 minutes to queue to get through that queue there, or the let's park and ride buses in three minutes. Easy decision for people to make. So very quickly, access charge. There's, op the, the op there's a, the, the option at those bypass lanes. We can decide who can use the. Um, now, obviously buses would want to use it, um, but we've also got tourist coaches, we've got taxis, we've got retail delivery vehicles, HGVs and LGVs, and courier vehicles. Now, all of those companies would be very happy to pay to get uh, accelerated access into the city. And there's a really good opportunity for raising revenue. And the other way we see doing that is rather than as a very complicated um, vehicle recognition system that where people have to pay each time they go through it, they pay an annual fee. So they, they, they basically, the company presents a list of all the registration numbers they want to be allowed through, and they pay in the order of a few thousand pounds per vehicle. The access is monitored by automatic number plate recognition cameras in real time, so we, it, it can be uh, identifying exactly which vehicles are permitted and which are not. And the cost of those passes can be proportional to the weight and the emissions rating of the vehicle. So this allows us to incentivize the bus companies and the HGV delivery vehicles and all the rest of it to use low pollution vehicles because they will save money by doing that. Um, because the, the, the pass, the annual pass they'd have to buy would be cheaper. I think I've probably at least filled my five minutes. Um, there's more information on our, about smart traffic management on our website, that's the shortcut link. Thanks, Edward. Um, colleagues, back again. <laughs>